So let's say someone still wants to try and give the colonization a go. Where do we go? OK, so let's say you definitely want to colonize space. Um, now, both our ancestors went and colonized from Europe to somewhere. Um, yep. United States, in your case, and my ancestors went to South Africa and Mauritius. And they had a choice. Do I jump on a steamer to New York or do I go to Australia or where do I go? And the same, if you're going to colonize space, you have a choice. Do you go to Jupiter or Saturn or Mars? Um, and what, what are you going to look for? Now, so obviously, if we're going to a place to live, we need stuff to be able to live. Now, simply put, one of the things that we need to live is stuff to build and use and live off of, right? You can't just live off nothing. And that means we need raw materials. And raw materials is elements. Yeah. So carbon, we need carbon. Yep. Which is I a mean, very simple thing. We're going to need water, yep. air to breathe. Um, and we're going to need iron to build things out of and carbon and nitrogen to and make we, and food. We don't, and we don't need water as water necessarily, but we do need hydrogen and oxygen to create water. We so can't we've got energy. We can combine hydroxygen to make water or we can break it up to get... Um, I mean, we've seen that ice is a very common... Yes. So most likely our water is going to be in the form of ice and then we need energy to break it up and that can produce us oxygen and to breathe. But it's still there. It's still that hydrogen and oxygen. That hydrogen to combine with carbon that we found from somewhere else to make rocket fuels yes. or food. And so some combination of all these things um, is, we'll talk more about this in the space course. Yes. Um, we also want the temperature not to be too extreme. Yeah, I mean, if, yes, we can deal with the cold, but if it's really cold, it's going to pose problems. It's also really hot, it's going to pose problems. And heat is probably worse than cold. Yes. If you're cold, you can always use energy to warm yourself up. If you're hot, I mean, we have air conditioning, but that just moves heat from one place to another. If you're in the middle of, say, Venus's atmosphere, where do you move the heat to? Yeah. yeah There's nowhere to move it to. That's right. But also this, this then brings up the thing, radiation, right? Yes, we do need radiation to a certain extent through energy, but too much radiation and, well, then physically we're not going to survive. Yeah, I mean, solar radiation is good, gives us energy, but, you know, nuclear radiation, um, you know, too much of it and we're all going to, our hair's going to fall out and we're going to die. Yeah. Um, and also we don't want the too high a pressure. Yeah. We don't want to be crushed. Low pressure is easy. I mean, on the moon you need a spacesuit to hold your, stop your body from popping out. Yeah. That's not too hard, though. E even a thin uh, membrane will be enough to do you that. You can do it. But too high pressure is tricky, right? I mean, think about going into the oceans, even big metal submarines can only go so much and places like Venus are really pressured. Okay, and that's sort of necessities. Yeah. It's also nice to have. It'd be good to have somewhere that's easier to go to. Ideally, yes. I mean, Pluto could be great, but uh, if it's going to take a decade just to get there or get supplies there, might be tricky. Yeah, although, of course, if we're trying to flee some tyranny on the Earth, it might be good to be far away <laughs> as possible. That's true, that's true. Um, and financial return. I mean, yep. most colonies have to have some way of making money so they can afford to, to live. pay for more colonists yeah. out and to live. I mean, in the United States, it would have been slave-driven plantations or... We had some gold rushes as well. Australia had the big gold rush yes. that mainly colonised it and so on. So there would have been something that you can make money off because the early stages of colonization are going to be very expensive. Yes. Until you can get an industrial base going, you're going to need to ship everything out from Earth. That's going to cost lots of money. So you That's probably right. want some way to make some money. cash. That is interesting to where you, Earth that you're going to get. Yes. That's right. OK, so let's go through the plants and see which okay. ones fit these. So no, But we also have some moons and other stuff on here, right? Yeah, I remember that the moons of Jupiter and Saturn are bigger than many planets, so yep. we don't want to rule them out. So... Let's start at the biggest one, like Jupiter or Saturn. Would that work as a place to colonize? Well, I mean, at the top of our list was like iron and carbon and physical stuff. And there's not a lot of physical stuff on Jupiter and I Saturn, I mean, they, they right? have no solid surface. Yeah. So, I mean, if you did try and sink, I mean, in the ice charts, you could in principle go down to some sort of icy surface, but you'd be crushed by the pressure. That's right. So if you're going to colonize that, you're going to be some sort of floating balloon based, which would be kind of cool. Um, but you're still not going to be able to physically get some of those resources that you need to build things. Have lots of hydrogen. Yeah. Maybe a bit of water, maybe a bit of carbon, but you're not going to have any iron no. or nickel. or uh, So that's not looking very feasible. Uh, another problem for these things is the radiation, especially for Jupiter. Yes. The radiation has an incredibly intense magnetosphere, and you would die of radiation sickness within seconds. Yes. Uh, and as you said, even if you go to the, some of these places low enough on the planet to get solid surface, the pressure's going to crush you, and we can't really solve that either. And the radiation actually rules out Jupiter's moons. Jupiter's moons would otherwise be quite a good place to colonize, but they're inside Jupiter's magnetosphere. That's right. The radiation is enough to fry the electronics on most space probes. Yeah, I mean, even the spacecraft have to do these really careful maneuvers so they don't turn into 
million dollar junk. And for, yeah, for humans, you yeah. could survive if you had a meter thick armor, but then you could never go out. Yeah. So probably not a good place to choose. I mean, if you're going to live you know, inside, buried under a meter thick, you might be anywhere. It doesn't really matter because you're never going to go out. That's right. So you try somewhere else. Saturn's moons would be okay. The radiation isn't so bad out there. Um, Some of them have water. So if they have all hydrogen. have water, yep. um, and the water, um, and there's plenty of hydrogen around there, and probably in the methane, and the other ices out there. Yeah, so that couldn't, that could be bad. The temperature is kind of cold, though. Yeah, so we can eliminate Jupiter, Jupiter's moons, Saturn, uh, Uranus, and Neptune. Saturn's moons, moons, Venus, and Neptune have all the ingredients we want. Yeah. They probably have a bit too much water, not enough rock. Yep. Um, but there is some rock there, so it yeah. could be doable if we needed. Certainly, tons of water, tons of hydrogen-based things. So that's good. Um, but now, Venus we can eliminate because uh, it's too hot and the pressure's too yeah, high. Uh, it, it, Venus is just, I mean, the probes barely last on Venus. It's just too hard to do. Yep. And you, how would you cool yourself there? Yeah. It's very hard. I mean, you need to have a heat pump out of the atmosphere. So you need a, you need a submarine-style heat pump just to survive on the planet. It's probably not going to happen. Okay. Um, and then uh, these things out here. They have a couple of problems. They have all yeah. the, right, the right ingredients, but the solar power is pretty pathetic out there. Yeah, if I you're mean, running with nuclear fusion reactors, that would be possible. But I mean, the solar power per unit area at Saturn is only 1% of that of the Earth. Yeah, I mean, even some of the probes of Jupiter, the solar panels are the size of a tennis court just to get enough to power a little 30 watt engine on this solar craft. So this kind of depends on whether we have some sort of cheap nuclear power. Yep. Uh, but if we don't have that, we can rely on solar power then we can eliminate these. And they're also a very long way away, so it's like a long time to get there. So, We've got you, nearer places which have more solar power and they, they're they closer. Have, they have some of the hydrogen and oxygen, they obviously have solid surfaces. The pressure's manageable in these places, so is the radiation. So probably we go here first and then worry about that once these are full. Yeah, and as you said, one of the likes would be somewhere close to get, and it's a lot easier to get to the Moon or Mars than, say, Pluto. That's right.